Now we're going to talk about the two forms of the inductor equation and get familiar with these things. I'm going to do some examples to show you how the inductor equations work. So we know that the inductor equation is the voltage across an inductor is a factor called L, the inductance, times di dt. So the voltage is proportional to the slope or the rate of change of current. Let me do a quick review of the two letters that are used as variables for inductors. When we have a resistor, we have we have a we call it a R and it's in units of ohms, and that's named after Ohm himself. And when we have a capacitor, the units are C for capacitance and F for Faraday. Farad. That's named after Michael Faraday. And for the inductor, we have two other letters we use, L and H. And L is the name of the component, and that's named after Lenz, Heinrich Lenz, and he did some research in induction. And the unit is named after Henry. And so that's the corresponding R, C, and L are the names of the components, and ohms, farads, and henrys are the units. Okay, let's get back to our inductor. There's another form of the inductor equation where we write it in terms of just I in terms of V. And to get to that point, we need to get rid of this derivative here. So what, we, what I'm going to do is take the integral of both sides of this equation. So we take the integral of V with respect to time. And that equals L times, take the integral of di dt with respect to time. And these two terms go away and we have the integral of di. The antiderivative of di is, is what, it, what function has a derivative of di? And that would be just i. So let me flip this all around here now. I'm going to write i on the left side equals 1 over l times the integral of v dt. Now we always put limits on this integral, so the limits in this case are time is, goes from minus infinity till some time now. And this tells us that the, uh, that the current through an inductor depends on the voltage across that inductor for the entire life, all the way back to time equals minus infinity. And that's not so convenient. We don't want to track this, the inductor's voltage back that far in time. So what we'll do instead is we'll, we'll say, let's say at t equals zero, that we know the volt, that we know the current, that we know some, we know some i of zero. And then we can change the limits on our, our integral here to be zero on the bottom. One over L, integral from time is zero until now, time t, big T, of V of t times dt. In order to account for everything that's happened before time equals zero, we'll just say what was the current at time equals zero. So that's I of zero. And I'll do one more little change. I, 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 don't want, I want this variable up here to be small t. And that means I have to replace this t inside here with some other symbol as a, as a dummy variable. And so now I'm, I'm going to get i of t, little t, 1 over l, integral from 0 to little t of v d, let's just call it tau, plus i of 0. So this is the integral form. There's the integral form of the inductor equation, and here is the derivative form. And we'll use both these. What I'm going to do now is we're going to do an exercise where we use this one down here. So in our circuit, we have a voltage source with a time pattern voltage in it. And we have a current going through this thing. And we want to find out what's this current. So we're connected to a inductor. It's a 10 millihenry inductor. And the voltage waveform is it starts at 0. At time equals 0, 
the, the voltage goes up to two volts. Then after two milliseconds, it goes to minus two volts. After two more milliseconds, it goes to plus two volts and on and on. So we know V of T and what we're going to figure out is what's, what's I through the, in, in the inductor. And to do that, we're going to use our, our inductor equation here, the integral form of the inductor equation. So I actually need some room on the screen here, so let me take a second and clean out some stuff. Okay, we're ready to go. So let's look at what's going on here before time equals zero. So in the before state, we're going to make an assumption. We're going to assume that I is zero a long time ago. And if we look at our chart here, it says that V is zero as well. And if I take this fact and I look at this equation right here, if V is zero, L is some positive number. So we can say that, so then we know that DI dt equals zero. So this circuit is pretty much doing nothing before this waveform starts working. Over here I'm going to make a little time chart of what, what we discover. That's time and this will be uh, current here. So before zero, before time is zero, we can say that the current is zero. Now yeah, we've plotted in part of our, our curve. Okay, now something happens. Now the voltage book goes up to two volts, and we're gonna use this equation, the integral form of the, the inductor equation, to figure out what happens to I of t now that voltage has changed. So we can say that I equals one over L times the integral from zero, times zero is our starting point here, to t, some time t, of v of t. Now v in this little region of time here is two volts, plus two times d tau plus i zero. And we decided i zero was the current that it started at right there, i zero is zero. Let's keep working on this. We can say that i equals 1 over 10 millihenries times the 2 comes out of the integral. And now it's the integral from 0 to t of d tau. The 0 goes away. That equals 2 over 10 millihenries times what? What's this integral evaluate to? It evaluates to t. Integral of d tau between 0 and t is t minus 0, or just plain t. So looking at this, I see that i equals a constant times t, and that's the equation of a line. That's the equation of a line if I plot it on t and i. So 2 over 10 millihenries is the slope, and to plot that line, what I need is two points on the line. I know one of the points already. I know one of the points is going to be right there at 0, 0. What is the current at the end of this pulse here? So at 2 milliseconds, let's figure out what the current is. And that equals, at 2 milliseconds, it's 2 times 2 milliseconds divided by 10 millihenries. The millis cancel themselves out, and I get 4 over 10, or... 0 0.4, what, amperes. So at two milliseconds, the value of the current is 0.4 amperes, and I can draw a straight line between there. So now we have the value of the current during this first excursion, this first part of the voltage waveform. Now, we're going to switch again. Now we have a new I0. Let's, let's go to a new point here. Let's go to a new point at, now we have I, I0 equals 
0.4, and we have V equals what? Now it goes to minus two volts, minus two volts. So let's use our inductor equation one more time with these, with these uh, initial conditions. That tells us I equals one over L integral from, what's the new point? Two milliseconds to T. And V of T after two milliseconds is minus two volts, minus two, D tau, plus, now we have a starting current. Our starting current was 0.4 amps, 0.4 amps. And let's continue on here. Let's, uh, maybe you can squeeze it in here. I equals one over 10 millihenries times minus two times the integral, the integral from two milliseconds to T of D tau plus 0 0.4, I equals minus two over 10 millis times. What is this? It's again, it's T minus T minus two milliseconds plus 0.4. And again, we have the equation of a line. This is the equation of a line. I, there's a constant times T. There's a, an, and followed by a constant. And this is basically a sloping line. It has a negative slope, and the, ne and the slope is negative two over 10 millis which is just the opposite of what we had over here. We had two over 10 millihenries. So it's the same looking kind of line. So let me mark out here. Here's four milliseconds. And it's gonna be a line that looks like this. So the current's gonna ramp up. It's gonna turn around and ramp straight back down because the, the slope up and the time up is the same as the slope down and the time down just with a negative slope. So there's an example of the inductor equation in action.